Welcome to Hannity. And tonight it is decision time here in the United States of America. Now, three of Donald Trump's children, Don Jr., Ivanka, Tiffany, they'll be here. That's all coming up. But first, I want to lay out my closing arguments about what is at stake in this election. This is as big a choice election as I have seen in my lifetime. It's a choice between Donald Trump, a candidate who says he'll drain the swamp in Washington and bring about real change, or Hillary Clinton, the most corrupt career politician who's ever run for this office. And if she wins tomorrow, probably will face years of intense scrutiny, congressional investigations, and maybe even impeachment. Now, Clinton is the epitome of everything we hate about politics. And while her campaign, they're celebrating FBI director James Comey, essentially so-called closing the case into a private email server. Let me remind you that the Bureau has been investigating pay to play allegations at the Clinton Foundation for the past year and will pursue that probe no matter what happens tomorrow. And by the way, five foreign intelligence agencies they have access to those emails. Now, WikiLeaks also exposed Bill Clinton, Inc. Remember that? The elaborate scheme directly tied to the foundation that Bill Clinton used to fatten his own paycheck, $116 million. And then there's Hillary Clinton's daughter, Chelsea Clinton. Well, she appears to have been using foundation money, which is intended for charity, to pay for her wedding and her living expenses for up to a decade. And according to the Associated Press, remember when Hillary was Secretary of State? 55% of non-government people who met with her, well, they were people that either gave money to the foundation or pledged money to the Clinton Foundation. There's also the tens of millions of more dollars that the Clinton Foundation has accepted from countries that treat women horribly. They kill gays and lesbians. They persecute Christians and Jews, all treated horribly. Not to mention, as WikiLeaks has exposed, the mainstream media is now completely in the tank for Hillary Clinton, and it is way worse than any of us could have imagined, especially CNN, and we'll deal with that after the election. Now, the abusively biased news media barely covered WikiLeaks and the Clinton scandals. So what makes you think they'll actually do it if she's occupying the Oval Office. Now, last night we found out from WikiLeaks that CNN solicited the DNC for tough questions to ask Donald Trump, Senator Ted Cruz, Carly Fiorina. Now, it's pretty clear they'll do anything and everything to protect Hillary Clinton. And speaking of the corrupt media, now they've been saying this race is over, but that could not be further from the truth. I think this race, so all of you understand, this is a winnable race for Donald Trump tomorrow. Now, the path to 270 electoral votes is not easy, but it is possible. Now, back in 2008, if you recall, I tried to warn all of you. I wanted to warn the country about how radical President Obama was. My warnings, they apparently weren't enough. Remember, I tried to warn you about uh, Frank Marshall Davis and Reverend Wright and a Linsky disciple that he was and Acorn and, you know, the Church of GD America, Bernadine Dorn, Bill Ayers. I was right about how terrible he'd be for this country, and Hillary Clinton, that's going to be more of the same. If you elect Hillary Clinton tomorrow, you're going to get the government you deserve, and guess what? Anybody that helps support her, you own it. Look at the economy, for example, of Barack Obama. The lowest labor participation rate since the 1970s. Almost 95 million of our fellow Americans out of the labor force. The worst recovery since the 1940s. The lowest home ownership rate in 51 years. 13 million more Americans on food stamps, 8 million more Americans in poverty, over 43 million Americans total in poverty. One in five American families don't have a single family member in the workforce. One in six men, 18 to 34, prime working years, they're either in jail or living in mommy and daddy's basement. And by the time Obama leaves office, this president will have accumulated more debt than 43 other presidents before him combined. Now, here's how Donald Trump plans to fix this. He's going to lower taxes, reform the tax code. We're going to go from seven tax brackets to three tax brackets. Trump will end the burdensome regulation. He'll push for 4% GDP growth. By the way, Obama, the first president in history not to have a single year of 3% GDP growth. Trump wants to create millions of jobs right here in America, insisting on free and fair trade. He'll incentivize those multinational corporations, and he's going to allow them to bring back not millions, not billions, but trillions of dollars into our economy with a low one-time 10% tax. That means factories and manufacturing centers will be built here. 
Donald Trump, he's talked about becoming energy independent, the lifeblood of our economy. That means we'll have fewer wars in the Middle East that we'll have to participate in. He'll expand coal mining. He'll expand domestic drilling, fracking, new technologies. Hillary, the exact opposite. Now, she's promised to raise taxes, $1.2 trillion, spending $1.4 trillion. She's against lower tax rates for corporations. That means corporations won't invest here. She brags about putting coal miners out of work and coal companies out of business. Now, she's against domestic drilling. She's against fracking. Pennsylvania, you make a lot of money for fracking, and a lot of jobs have been created because of fracking. She obviously would rather that her Saudi rich donors, that they get the money instead of Americans getting good paying jobs and careers. She also supports terrible trade deals. How about the disaster that's Obamacare? It has destroyed America's health care system. Remember, the president and Hillary, they said you can keep Keep your doctor, keep your plan. The average American family would save $2,500 a year. But guess what? We know it's all a lie. Millions have lost their doctors. Millions have lost their plans. And on average, the average American family has seen their health care premiums go up on average $4,100 per family. And the White House just admitted a few weeks ago that premiums are going to skyrocket next year by double digits. And yet Hillary, she defends it. Take a look. The Republicans want to repeal the Affordable Care Act. I take that really as a challenge because before there was something called Obamacare, there was something called Hillary Care. And we work really hard to provide universal health care coverage. Obamacare, Hillary Care, call it whatever you want, a complete and utter disaster. Well, Donald Trump, he wants free market competition to make it affordable for everybody. Competition will help. You get more coverage for less money. Next, the Supreme Court. What has Donald Trump promised? He promised justices like Antonin Scalia and Clarence Thomas. They are originalists. They believe in separation of powers, co-equal branches of government. Clinton wants the exact opposite. Liberal activists who believe in legislating from the bench, people that would cite foreign law to justify their activism. That's not constitutionalism. Now, the choice for our country could not be clearer. Now, let's talk about national security. For example, when it comes to refugees, we've had the FBI director, the assistant FBI director, the director of national intelligence, the CIA director, the sp former special envoy to defeat ISIS, the House Homeland Security chairman have all said ISIS will infiltrate the refugee population like this. Would that uh, bring in Syrian refugees? pose a greater risk to Americans. It's clearly a population of concern. The concern is in Syria, the lack of our footprint on the ground in Syria. The databases won't have the information we need. So it's not that we have a lack of process, it's there's a lack of information. And, and, and that, that obviously raises grave concern as to being able to do uh, proper background checks as the individual is coming into the country. Yes. I don't obviously uh, put it past uh, the likes of ISIL to infiltrate operatives uh, among these uh, refugees. We can only query against that which we have collected. And, and so if someone has never made a ripple in the pond in Syria in a way that would get their identity or their interests reflected in our database, we can query our database till the cows come home, but there'll be nothing show up because we have no record on that person. We should be uh, conscious of the potential that uh, Daesh may attempt to embed uh, agents uh, within that, po that population. The group is probably exploring a variety of means for infiltrating operatives into the West. That make you feel safer. What she just said is a 550% increase. So why doesn't Hillary listen to our top intelligence and defense officials if these unvetted refugees kill you, the American people, attack our homeland, she would be responsible. What about border security and Trump's promise to build a wall? A country without borders is not a country, and Hillary has bragged she wants to build bridges and not walls. Give me a break. Now, if people can walk across the border looking for a better life, so too can America's enemies. Now, the president's job is to protect the homeland, the most important job they have. But it's not just the country's security that's impacted. There are, what, 11 million, the number of illegal immigrants in the United States? Guess what? That's costing you, the American taxpayer, a fortune, almost $113 billion a year in education, health care, criminal justice costs alone. It's time now to put America first. We can't afford it any longer. Obviously, Mexico won't write us a check to build the wall. But with Trump's tough trade deals, well, hopefully they'll more than pay for it. 
Now the military, it is in a drastic decline. It is time to modernize America's weaponry with the most technologically advanced equipment we can develop. Donald Trump has vowed to make this happen. And when it comes to foreign policy, Clinton, Obama, they have such a long list of failures. What about that Russian reset? They gave the number one state sponsor of terror, Iran, $150 billion so they can continue to spin their centrifuges? What about Syria? What about the red line? Well, they did nothing when Assad crossed it, and Obama and Clinton gave Mohammed Morsi, remember him, former president of Egypt? He was part of the Muslim Brotherhood. Well, they gave him F-16s and tanks and 1.5 billion of your dollars. Now, North Korea, they don't respect us. China, they have territorial ambitions. They have no fear of the United States under Obama or Hillary. And then there's Benghazi, which happened under Hillary Clinton's watch, four Americans dead, and at this point, it makes a difference. And that's not all. The country is divided like never before. And you know what? The people in the front line of dividing this country, rich versus poor, old versus young, black versus white, men versus women, is Obama and Hillary Clinton. How often have we seen them play the race card? She's been pitting people against each other again and again, trying to paint Republicans, conservatives, as being bad for the African-American community. Now, this has all been done to distract African-Americans and the American people from the fact that under the leadership of Obama and Clinton, African-Americans on food stamps has gone up, look at this, 58%. African-Americans not in the labor force, 18.5%. And like every four years, Democrats, they play the race card to get votes. Well, Donald Trump has promised a new New Deal with African-American voters. He promises safe communities, high-paying jobs, and a good education. And when it comes to education, what did Trump promise? He said he wants to get rid of Common Core, top-down, NEA education. He'll let you, American parents and teachers and local communities and states, you get to decide how to run your schools. And they'll send education back to you where it belongs. Hillary, on the other hand, free college. Everything's free in Hillary's world. No realistic explanation, of course, how she plans to pay for it all. I'll say it again. This is a choice election. When it comes to the economy, it's Trump who will cut taxes. Hillary will raise taxes. Energy, it's about energy independence, the lifeblood of our economy, or dependence, and that would be a disaster. Obamacare, repeal it, replace it, or keep it and double down on it. I don't think that's a good idea. When it comes to the Supreme Court, Hang on one second. This will impact this country for generations. Donald Trump wants originalists. Hillary wants activists, liberal, acorn, Alinskyites sitting on the court legislating from the bench. Fighting Islam, radical Islam. Do you want a commander in chief who's not afraid to call out our enemy for what they are and who they are? Refugees, do you want people to be extremely vetted to keep you safe or not? When it comes to the military, should we rebuild it or allow our military to continue its decline like Clinton will take us? What about America's role in the world? Do you want us to be first or not? You okay with America's decline, educating our kids? Should we be, if we're paying the most money per capita, shouldn't we have the best test scores? We're like 18, 22, and 25, and we spend more money than any other industrialized country. Now, in my mind, tomorrow is an important day. The answer couldn't be more clear. So if you're in a swing state, if you're in Florida, if you're in Ohio, if you're in Iowa, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Michigan, Colorado, New Mexico, Nevada, if you're in Maine's second congressional district, North Carolina, we need you. It's up to you. You can decide tomorrow to save America from the declining state it is in and stop this downward spir spiral. That's what this election is about. Tomorrow night, if Hillary Clinton's elected, those who didn't support Donald Trump, voted for Hillary or never Trumper, I'm telling you right now, you own her Supreme Court, you own her unvetted refugees, you own her tax increases, you own her open borders, you own Obamacare, and you own her, her energy independence. You will own it. All right, we got a lot coming up tonight. Trump takes his message to a lot of swing states today. Laura Ingram is here with Reaction Plus. Three of Donald Trump's children, Ivanka, Don Jr., Tiffany, will be here tonight. All of that, plus Rudy Giuliani, as we continue this election eve. will decide whether we're ruled by a corrupt 
political class, or whether we are ruled by yourselves, the people. Oh, we're going to have a great victory tomorrow, folks. We're going to have a great victory. They have no idea. This is considered, in the history of this country, this, this is actually, and you've been hearing it, this is considered the greatest movement. Nobody's ever seen anything like this, folks. Donald Trump out on the campaign trail in Pennsylvania. That was earlier tonight, addressing voters before they head to the polls tomorrow. And he doesn't even need Jay-Z using the N-word or the F-word or any other word. And he doesn't have Bruce Springsteen. He doesn't have bon jo John Bon Jovi, whatever his name is. Anyway, here with Reaction, Fox News contributor, editor-in-chief, Life Zet, and nationally syndicated radio host, Laura Ingram. I Living on a prayer, John Bon Jovi. <laughs> That's Hillary's campaign at this point. Living on a prayer. What do you think? I think when you watch what happened over the last just 48 hours in the difference between the rallies, like in, in any given hour, it is Trump with the people. There's really not many other people with him. I mean, I was at a, a rally last night at, well, not yesterday, this morning <laughs> at one in the morning in One Sterling, in the morning Virginia. in Virginia, right? Right. Yes, it was like myself, Raymond Arroyo, our family. So we went and you had to walk like two miles to get there. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. People streamed thousands of people walking on this dark road, but dirt road. And, it's, and I've never seen anything like it except at like a music festival, like a Coachella kind of thing. It was insane. Only about 2,500 people could get in and there were 12,000 people outside in the cold. Mm -hmm. But those were people making a last stand for America, Sean. You talked about it in your monologue, which is, by the way, phenomenal. I'm posting it on my Facebook page, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And with, with Hillary, she has a lot of bells and whistles, no doubt about it. She has a very popular sitting president. It would be nice if we had a former president who was campaigning with our nominee. Yeah, it would be nice. And she has a lot of celebrities. But what she doesn't have is the heart of the people. I really don't think she has that. She has the accoutrement, she has the name ID, and she has the big donors. Trump has the people, the working people, the people who put have in the screwed. long hours. The people have been screwed. Who've had their wealth and their opportunities offshored and who've been really poorly served by, in many ways, both parties. And he's standing with those people in the cold, in the, on the dirt road as they trudge up those fields to these rallies. He stands with them against the GOP establishment, the Bushes, the Obamas, the Clintons, the Chamber of Commerce, Hollywood, academia the entire Democratic establishment, and a lot of the Republicans and, and you know, a lot of senators. Republican who establishment. Not, Pat Toomey didn't really stand with him, and, you know, God bless, but he's pretty much against all of these people for America, all these groups for America, the American working class. It's pretty inspiring. I mean, and I think regardless of whatever happens tomorrow, we're never going back. I mean, all these people are. You gonna, and I agree. Oh, we're, this is not. Back. This is just the beginning. No, no. The, the, the big government republicanism that Don. our friend Bill Crystal and like all these other people that no one knows their names, but these never Trumpers are like, oh, we're going to get back there and then we're going to go into this country and that country and we're going to spend all this money. It's over, folks. It's over. You had your time. It didn't work. These policies don't work. Hillary's going to continue a lot of these same policies, Sean, and they're going to fail. And America's going to be more unhappy, less prosperous. China's probably going to be a lot more powerful. And then in four years, we're going to have a decision to make all over again if Hillary Clinton should win. If Donald Trump wins, we actually have a chance to begin turning this around. It's going to take a while. That's exciting. And regardless of what happens, the people who showed up at these Trump rallies, they were maligned, they were ridiculed, they were called deplorable, they were sneered at, laughed at, and, and absolutely dismissed by Hollywood, the entertainment class, the Democrats, many of the Republicans. And they did it anyway, because they love this country, and they're magnificent people. That is a great testament to what was started by Donald Trump. I think he has a really good chance to, to retire the Clintons once and for all. I and do. I'm really excited about tomorrow, regardless too. of what happens. And you've done an amazing job of holding think, up the mirror well, you, to the you failures know, of both parties. Honestly, the three, pe the, the, the uh, four of us. Well, there's a few more. You, me, Newt, Monica Crowley, Larry Falling. Elder. Yeah, there's been. A, there's, I don't. I'm going to forget Drudge. names, and I don't want to. Matt Drudge, um, and we've been. You know, a lot. I am starting tomorrow. Yeah. The Republican Party names are being named. They 
What they did is disgusting. They should have stood what with the their media, nominee. CNN getting questions, oh, all the questions from the DNC all and then the questions. giving questions to Hillary. CNN is over. They should not host another presidential Ever. debate. CNN and the Republicans, you let the foxes back in the hen house. Right. You deserve what you get. You do. And, and, and all these CNN executives are like, oh, well, this is just an anomaly. No, that's how you operate. And it happened with uh, people at Politico. It happened with John Harwood. Times. It happened with the New York Times. And Donald Trump exposed that. If it weren't for Trump, do you think we would have really known about all this? Probably not. I mean, WikiLeaks is obviously responsible for getting these revelations out. But Trump exposed so much about this collusion. That's really powerful. Collusion with the State Department. Yep. Collusion with the Justice Department. The media. Collusion with the media. Collusion with the White House. Bush's Clinton's collusion. Yeah. They're supporting. I mean, Romney? I, I had a what joke. A disappointment. I had a joke that Jeb should be picked as Hillary's running mate. And like, let's make it official. I mean, Clush 2016. What difference does it make? I'll start just to give a little hint of what's going to come later yep. this week. The John Kasichs, the Lindsey Grahams, the Jeb Bushes make promises how could we ever trust a word they say you get the final word is he going to win uh, i think he has a really good chance of winning I agree. I, no one else could have come as close as trump and the idea that marco rubio who got destroyed by christie in like 120 seconds was he couldn't win his home state was yeah. going to beat the clintons never going to happen but america now sees what's really behind the curtain the only person who could have illuminated that and gotten these people it's out trump. on a cold fall night is Donald Trump. Sean, you've done a great job. You too. Laura, great uh, seeing you. Absolutely. And you got no sleep. All right, when we ah, come back, yeah. Rudy Giuliani will join us. And then later tonight, three of Donald Trump's children, Ivanka, Don Jr., Tiffany, will be here as we continue this election eve. Because with your vote, we are just one day away from the change you've been waiting for for your entire life. Because if we win tomorrow, we will be able to make America wealthy again, to make America strong again, to make America safe again, and to make America great again. Donald Trump making his final pitch to voters in North Carolina, a very important state, earlier today. Joining us now with reaction, fresh off the campaign trail. You'd think he's running for president himself because he's been in every state with Donald Trump and on the campaign trail himself. Former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani. Mr. Mayor, I laid out at the top of the show my final arguments. What's at stake here? What do you want to tell the American people? Well, I think you, lay, you laid them out beautifully. Sean, I'd, I'd give you A+. Plus in uh, litigation uh, summation. Uh, fabulous. <laughs> okay. You got all the arguments in. You got all the arguments in. You left out a few about how corrupt she is. Uh, I'm kind of stunned by uh, the latest re revelations. You know, the maid who had access Isn't that to against the law? secret material. Is that against the uh, law? It's a crime, it's a, it's a crime mm. Sean. Yeah. Never investigated by the FBI. Uh, I guess they don't investigate crimes anymore. She never has been put before a grand jury. A crime for both Hillary and the maid. Uh, how about stealing money from the Clinton Foundation to pay for Hillary's wedding? That, I mean, there uh, are Chelsea's a lot wedding. of... Yeah. Uh, for Chelsea's uh, wedding, rather. There are, there are a lot of middle-class people there at home who saved a lot of money all their lives to pay for their daughter's wedding out of their hard-earned cash. They were multimillionaires, and they stole money from the Clinton Foundation that supposedly does good work. Apparently for like a decade. supports Chelsea for a year. Well, apparently yeah, and longer. also Cheryl Mills on the payroll, Huma Abedin on the payroll. I mean, come on. This is the difference between probably the most crooked family in American politics trying to get control of the White House again so they can sell the Oval Office the way they sold the State Department, or a man who can transform America and, and really make possible for us our greatest aspirations. A great America, an exceptional America, a good America, not this um, globalistic model that she has, which, by the way, if you bother to read the speeches she was hiding and getting paid a lot of money for, she's in favor of not just Obamacare, she's in favor of socialized medicine. Oh, yeah, big time. She wants us to have a medical system. She even said it to a Canadian bank like Canada.
Let me ask you this, Mr. Uh, Mayor. The Canadian uh, yeah. health system is a health system where you wait online for yeah. treatment. They come here for Basically. treatment. They, they come to America to get yes. treated in, in more expeditiously. Uh, let me ask you this. Assuming he wins Iowa, assuming he wins Ohio, assuming he wins North Carolina, assuming he wins Florida, what state will take him over the top? Which states? Well, you left out New Hampshire. New Hampshire and the one vote in Maine. That's an important that's state. A, that's yeah, a, those are two important that's areas. Fi that's five. Yep. That's that gives you five. That gives you five votes. Uh, I was in Pennsylvania all day today. I met him. Uh, I left him. I left him after the incident the other night when uh, the gun, you know, was thought to be in the audience. Sure. And then I went off and campaigned in my own in Nevada all day on Sunday. How do you feel, feel about very Nevada? Good about Nevada. No, I didn't like the early voting uh, numbers in Nevada. I feel good about it. Yeah. I, uh, uh, look, you know, we always, we always come in late, Republicans. Yeah. Uh, and I think I think he's peaking an old Nixon term, by the way. I think he's peaking at just the right time. All right. I Mr. think that the fervor, the fervor is about as high as it's ever, ever been. And I think he's going to go in tomorrow with a big, big, uh, big, big vote. Mr. Mayor, it'll shock the world. The world is watching. And I it's hope it's going to shock the world right. and it's going to happen. And, and, I, and I predict by two states. It's not going to be just one state. He's going to win by two. By two. All right, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I know you worked hard. <laughs> right. uh, you, you probably deserve a vacation after this. I'll tell Donald to send you down to Mar-a-Lago. Uh, thanks for being with us. <laughs> okay, I'll, 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 I'll tell you what. How about we both go to Doral? We play a little golf I've never together. been to one of his facilities. I never got an invitation in my life, but I'll take it. I'll go. Right, we'll, we'll go to Doral. <laughs> okay. I, I'll, I'll, play, I'll play it with you. We'll play around we'll the golf. See. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And three of Donald Trump's children, Ivanka, Don Jr., Tiffany, they'll join us next. And they'll explain why their father should be the next president. They're close Closing arguments coming up. You have one day to make every dream you ever dreamed for your country come true. You have one magnificent chance to beat the corrupt system and deliver justice for every forgotten man, forgotten woman, and forgotten child in this nation. Do not let this opportunity slip away. We are fighting for every citizen who believes that government should serve the people, not the donors and not the special interests. All right, Donald Trump earlier today campaigning today in the must win state of Florida. Tomorrow, the nation will decide who will be the next president of the United States. And over the last few days, Donald Trump and his family, they've been crisscrossing the nation. They're making their final push and their final arguments. Joining us now are four of Donald Trump's children. I'm sorry, three of them. Uh, we've got Ivanka, Tiffany and Don Jr. Guys, how you all holding up? Ivanka, we'll start with you. Um, how you feel about tomorrow? I feel incredible. I feel so energized today. I was with Tiffany. We were in Michigan. Um, then we were in two stops in Virginia. And now we're here in New Hampshire. And I will tell you that the spirit and the enthusiasm and the energy and the love and the support has been so tremendous. So we feel very, very good. Yeah, it's been a really a family very effort. Good. I know you've been. And Don's working the least. I noticed that he's only doing like five or six <laughs> stops a day. Oh, I've only done <laughs> seven or eight hundred thousand miles in the last few days. Yeah, and no. he doesn't ever let us forget it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is that right? He's, 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 like, you know I'm not with my five kids right now, right? <laughs> you know, the funny thing is I say, hey, I'd be texting Don. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm here, but I'm flying here, 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 and here. I'll have a minute in, in two days from now. Uh, how you feeling, Don? <laughs> yeah. I, listen, I feel great. I mean, the, the warmth and the outpouring that we're getting from people, these you know, disaffected Americans that haven't had a voice in generations. I mean, they see that look of you know, hope in my father and, you know, watching them and watching them react to his message and even our message candidly when we're speaking in these places. Uh, it's really special. It's changed us a lot, I think, throughout the process. It's been a real growing process. It's easy to get glib. It's easy to take things for granted. And I think we were raised not to do that. But even still, when you see real Americans coming up to you this way, it's awesome. Tiffany, I know you've been on a lot and you've been working hard for your dad. How do you feel about uh, the process so far? It's just been amazing, honestly. It's so inspiring to see so many people, you know, get behind this movement. And, you know, everyone's working hard, and now it's up to everyone getting out there and voting. Yeah. Have, all right, when I look at the polls and I look at the Electoral College, Donald, I'll, th I'll throw this to you. It is neck and neck. Is it nerve-wracking? Where do you feel your, your dad breaks through 
Uh, look, I think your dad's up. In, he's obviously up in Iowa. I like his numbers in North Carolina. I like his numbers so far early in Florida. Florida is going to be a two point race, though, either way at the end of the day. Um, and Ohio looks pretty good for your dad. And now you got to get to those final states. Which states are you feeling yeah. the best about well, considering you've been to all of them and then some? You know, I, I think we're making a serious play in New Mexico. I think we're making a serious play and pushing in Colorado. Uh, I was in Michigan uh, earlier today. Now I'm New Hampshire, and we're going back to Michigan later on tonight. But I was in Michigan today. Uh, and, and, man, the feeling is really good there, too. I mean, so I think we can put some states into play that aren't supposed to be in play. So I think that can change the map. I think that could really change the dynamic of what we feel tomorrow night. I think it go a lot later uh, than perhaps a lot of people are thinking. And so there's a lot of interesting stuff going on. But there's states in play that aren't supposed to be in play. And it's because we're reaching out the real Americans who haven't had that voice. You know, and Ivanka Sean, I, I would just say to all of your viewers, turnout is so important. So we hope everyone gets out and votes. Like you said, it will be close. Um, but the response to my father's message has been so overwhelmingly positive. So we encourage everyone to get out tomorrow and, and really vote because every vote matters. I'm gonna, I'll ask specifically, how do you think in any way, and I've seen a change in your dad from my perspective, but I, that, you know, that's, I've known your dad a long time. Have you seen a change in your father? Any of you that want to weigh in? Oh, 100%. What is the change, Ivanka? I think there's you can't go through this process. It's fundamentally changed me. You meet so many people and you hear their stories and they're incredible stories. They're heartwarming stories and then you hear devastating stories. And it's the fuel that motivates you and I see it every day. Look, yesterday my father was in six states. It's almost, you know, it's, he's like a machine, but he's um, buoyed and fueled by the energy of the people and by their belief in yeah. him um, as an agent of change. And look, 70% of this country believes that we're headed in the wrong direction. And he knows what to do to get the country back on track. And the excitement and the belief in the potential of Trump leadership is, um, is amazing to him. And he's, he's so encouraged by it. And it means so much to him. And he'll never let, he'll never let Americans sit down. Tiffany, you see a change in your dad? I think every day he continues to get more inspired by the American people and more touched and it really is fueling him to, you know, go out there and really want this and really want to make a difference for all of us. Yeah, and by the way, he is, is working. You know, I think he does like eight thing. states to Hillary's two. Uh, he's certainly like the energizer. Uh, you, you can't even, Sean, you can't even compare the two. And I mean, and that's the way he's going to fight for the American people, you know. Hillary's fought for special interests. She's fought for the every, every elite class you can get. And this is what this election is. This is a rare and unique chance to bring an outsider into yeah. Washington, D.C., someone who's willing, able, and ready to take on the D.C. cartel and break it up. Because candidly, as conservative as I am, and you know me well enough, both sides have failed us. This Big is really time. about insider versus outsider, and we need an outsider to break up this system. Well, he talks about He's draining the swamp. He's to nobody other than the American people. You know, and it is interesting. Very, very hard for all of us. Hillary does need Jay Z dropping the N word and F bombs and Beyonce and the Obamas and Bruce Springsteen to get a crowd. Um, and it is interesting yeah. that your dad is filling up arenas all around the country. All right, we have a couple more minutes with Ivanka, Tiffany, Donald Trump Jr. right after the break as we continue. As we continue on Hannity, we continue with the children of GOP presidential candidate Donald Trump uh, Jr., Ivanka, and Tiffany. All right, Don, let me ask you this question because I know you and I talk a lot about politics and I've known you now for a while. You know, you watch what James Comey has done here. We don't even know if an investigation is ongoing into the Clinton Foundation and the pay to play uh, scandal. We've learned through WikiLeaks, CNN is asking the DNC questions for your father. We know that they really screwed over Bernie Sanders. We know that CNBC, MSNBC, the New York Times, almost the entire media establishment has been against your father and now we can prove it. Is that hard to yeah. discover all of the corruption at this level? 
Well, listen, it's been going on. It's been following our opponent for decades. I mean, this isn't anything new. The stuff that's more recent is more troubling because it's actually in our face. And perhaps to me, as an American, what's more troubling is that so few people on her side actually care. I ask you, with the whether it be the WikiLeaks stuff, whether it's certainly the email scandal, if you, Sean, me, any of our kids, any of our grandkids, any of your viewers' kids and grandkids did the same thing that Hillary Clinton did, they'd all be in jail. Okay? Yeah. No one on either side of the aisle would even contest that, in my opinion. She's incredibly reckless, this, that, and the other, but nothing's going to happen. And that's what the American people are rebelling against. They're rebelling against that double standard, that standard that is held for the elite and the standard that's held for everyone else. That's so much of what this election is about. So it's not so much about the results. It's about the way those things are handled and managed. That's what's scary to me as an American. Yeah, it scares me, too. I, you know, I've been in radio my 30th year. 21 years now on Fox, and I got to tell you, as much as I believe government was corrupt, I never knew it was this bad. Drain the swamp is probably the most appropriate way to, to, to deal with that. All right, last question for all of you. I know you guys got to run. Ivanka, how hard is it to read a newspaper, to watch a news program, and people hammering your dad every day, but they don't really hammer Hillary, and there's so much that even the WikiLeaks scandal that the media just ignored. How hard is it to hear that about your own father? It's very hard. We're not a family of politicians. So, you know, I, I, I will say on a personal level, I was probably a little bit naive when my father declared his candidacy as to what it meant to go through this experience. And it is incredibly hard. There's so much editorializing. There's a lot of fiction that's put out into the universe about my father and, and, and our family. So it is hard. But I will say, for all of that and for all of that negativity, it's so counterbalanced by the love and the enthusiasm and the hope um, and the belief of the tens of millions of Americans who support my father. And that's also been an amazing thing for me to live through and experience. So I'll go to a rally such as this one tonight in Manchester, and there's so much heart in the room. So yeah. that is the other side of the pendulum, and ultimately that's much more meaningful to me. All right, we're going to have notice. Last word, Tiffany. It's, you know, it, it was hard, but we know who our father is, and I think no tabloid can write anything that will make us doubt that. So we know the truth, yeah. and luckily we're... It helps to know the man. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, and I wish, that's the one thing I wish that everyone could experience is the man that's the father, the man that's the grandfather, really the man that's been the employer to th tens of thousands of people. You know, those people know him so well, and I wish the American people saw it. I, I think they see it the other day. I think they see it in his sense of humor. I think they see it there. But if those people all saw the way he really is, you know, off of a stage, there's a know, great at a dinner table. There's a great video. Uh, it's on I, I my think Twitter it would move feed a lot of people about your dad hiring a former boxer. I'll, I'll urge people. I'll retweet it again tonight. Listen. Good luck to uh, all of you. By the way, Ivanka and Tiffany, that guy that's to your left. He's running for office one day. I just want to give you a heads up in case you want to distance yourself from him now. You may want to watch his Twitter. Decompression from politics. I don't, it's not happening. I told you this. It's not happening. All right, guys. Good to see you. Uh, best of luck tomorrow. Appreciate you being with us. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. Thanks, Bye. All right, when we come back, we have more Hannity right after this break. All right, welcome back to Hannity. Unfortunately, that is all the time we have left. You want a better country, go out and vote tomorrow. It is so important. If you are in those important states, if you're in Florida, if you're in North Carolina, if you're in New Hampshire, if you're in Ohio, if you're in Iowa, if you're in Pennsylvania, Michigan, Minnesota, if you're in Wisconsin, Colorado is huge, Nevada is huge, Arizona huge, New Mexico, you could come through and save your country. And you'll get the country at the end, in the end, that you deserve. We'll see you back here very soon. Brett Bears up next. Have a great night.